Last week, Google launched a brand new tool called the Workspace Studio. And they're calling this tool an agent, or rather they're calling the tools that it creates agents. But what it really is, is a workflow automation tool. And that's very similar to other automation tools that you may have worked with in the past, like Zapier or make.com. But this one is built right into Workspace. So all the Workspace apps like Gmail and Google Docs and Calendar and Forms and everything else are already built in. And it's not just limited to those apps. It can connect to other services like QuickBooks or Salesforce or really anything else. But since this is an AppSheet channel, the big question is, does it work with AppSheet? And that's what we're going to look at right now. All right, so this is Workspace Studio, and you can get here by just going to studio.workspace.google.com. You will have to have this enabled in your Google Workspace account uh, by turning on early access features. If you're not the administrator of your Google Workspace account, you'll need to get your administrator to do that. But once you do, you can just go to this URL, again, studio.workspace.google.com, and you should be able to access this tool. So on the main page here, they have you starting off by creating a custom agent, AKA workflow, by just typing in what you want. So you could type in something here like I, you know, I want when I receive a Gmail to, for it to create a Google Doc with you know, a summary of whatever came in the email address using Gemini. So you could type something like that here and it'll actually go and create that workflow for you. But I find at least to understand how this works a little bit better when you're first getting started, it might be easier to just start by doing that manually, which is also pretty straightforward. And the way that you can do that is going down here to my agents. Uh, you can uh, then click this little plus button in order to be able to create an agent. And this is what that looks like. Again, very similar workflow style interface that you've seen probably in uh, AppSheet automations, as well as tools like uh, Zapier, where it lets you build a tool just like this with a trigger action, which they call starter here, uh, and then uh, actual steps that you can run after that, which they call actions here. So we've got a number of different options available for our starters here. Most of them Google Workspace related things like a chat message being uh, coming in, like a email arriving, like a Google form being submitted, things like that. So you can select all those different types of things here. For this demo, I'll just say when something changes in a sheet, and I just need to pick a random spreadsheet here. I'll just uh, click this messaging one. And then from there, you can select what you want to happen when something within the sheet changes. So I'm going to go in there. And there's a number of different options, pre-built options within here for from doing things with Gemini to actually running logic to be able to do different things depending on what the state of the data that triggered this was or what actually happened in previous steps. And that's what this if and, and filter can do, we add a little bit of logic into these flows. And then you got the actual like pre-built steps, things like doing a bunch of different types of actions within Gmail or... Uh, within Google Chat or within Sheets or all these different things. And then down at the bottom, there's third-party tools that are available as well. So uh, we've got Asana that you can do things like create a task, uh, Confluence, create a page, HubSpot, a bunch of actions, Jira, create an issue, MailChimp, QuickBooks, Salesforce. So those seem to be their launch partners. Those are the ones that have been available here from the beginning. But I'm sure there will be more coming here. And it's also pretty straightforward to create custom actions that can be tied in here, which we're going to be looking at later in the video. So for now, let's just say that we want to draft an email and I can put in the to address here manually by just typing something in uh, subject message, same thing. Or you can also use this variables, which lets you select values from the previous steps. So for example, for my subject, I can hit variables and I can select step one when a sheet changes and pick any of the values that were actually in that sheet. So uh, I can say the latest value from message from message. There's a, a column called message within that sheet. And if I pick that, it's going to insert the latest values from that. And you see there's a bunch of other options there as well, uh, such as, you know, the editor's email address, the their display name, the timestamp of, time of the change. So lots of different values that you can 
very easily pick up and mix and match into here. And that's going to actually be used to populate this draft email that gets sent. And similarly, I can follow this up with another step. Like, let's say that I want to create a Google Doc and I can pick values from all those steps. So you see, I've now got my two steps. First, the trigger that triggered this. And second, the email that we're drafting. So if I want to take some value from the email, like, um, you know, whoever is on the BCC and put it into a Google Doc that I'm going to create here, it will actually do that. So this is how you can chain together a bunch of steps within your workflow, which again, they call an agent within Workspace Studio. All right, looks pretty cool, right? And because everything lives right within Google Workspace, there's a lot less setup than compared to some of the traditional workspace automation tools. And for a lot of teams, it could mean that you could drop that workspace automation tool subscription completely since you already have this available within Workspace, which you know could be substantial saving. But there is one very big app, and that is that Workspace Studio does not currently support AppSheet. Now, technically, you could work around that by just using the Sheets integration, assuming that you're using Sheets as your AppSheet data source. But that's limited in that it doesn't give you the same level of access to your data that the AppSheet app itself does. For example, virtual columns are going to be in your AppSheet app, but not within your Google Sheet. So what I've been doing is experimenting with a custom integration that lets you connect Workspace Studio using the AppSheet API. Let's take a look at that. All right, so let's create another workflow, aka agent here. I'm gonna trigger this off of a sheet change. And the sheet is going to be this payment record sheet. And one of the great things about this is that even though it doesn't have every integration currently, including AppSheet, uh, it does make it fairly straightforward to create new steps using AppScript. And that's what I've done in this example. I've created down here underneath uh, AppSheet connector, this thing called get record, which actually uses the AppSheet API in order to retrieve that record from AppSheet and then to provide it into this workflow so that I can use it in other steps. So let me choose that. And I've already set up two different connections to two different AppSheet apps. They are this trivia app that I created for a demo a while ago that uses AI to generate random trivia questions and answers for a topic, uh, and also this SwimMeet app. So these apps have nothing to do with each other, but I'm just using them for this example just to show that I can pull data together from completely different apps in different places. So let's go back to our workflow again. And I've, I've basically turned on the API for these two different things in AppSheet and gotten the information that you need in order to access the API externally, including the app ID and the access token, which I've already configured in this manage connections uh, thing, which is part of my integration that I built here. So let's first say that we want to connect to the trivia app. In the trivia app, it only has one table that's named question. And so that's what I want to access. So I'm just going to type question here for the table name. And then it also takes a filter expression in order to determine what data I want to retrieve from AppSheet. So I've got a filter expression here that basically just returns all the records from the question table, which there's only one in the case of this app. And I'm going to save that. So that's done. Now that's our first app. Now I want to add another step to get the data from that swim meet app as well. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to select get record again. This time I want to select swim meet. The table name in swim meet that I want to get data from is a schools table. So I'm going to type that in here. And the selector expression that I have for this one is that I want to return all the rows that start with C. So I'm going to paste that in there. All right. And then finally, let's add one more step that drafts an email and it's going to combine together all the data from all these different steps that we had processed before it, including the, the step one, which was the starter, the sheet change. So I'm just going to type in an email address here to send it to. 
I'm going to use my trivia category that I'm getting back from app sheet here. So I'll select category to enter it there. And I'm going to call and then put trivia after that. So it'll be something like Harry Potter trivia. And then I'm going to grab a value from the swim sheet record. So we'll go here and that's the second query. And we've got name, which is the school name that, remember, this is pointing to the school table. So that's the school name that it found. So I'm going to insert that. And then finally, let's just throw in a random value from that first table. Uh, it's got something called customer amount uh, or ID customer and amount. So I'll put in customer there as well. So this is basically going to be grabbing those values from all those different steps that executed before that and creating an email draft with that. So that's all done. I can hit turn on now, which is going to actually turn this uh, workflow on so that it will be able to run when that sheet does change. It does take a few seconds here. All right, and this is the table that I've got it connected here to. I've got ID, customer, and amount. So I'm going to put in an ID, and we'll call it demo, and we'll say $17. All right, and we'll save. So that. It has executed now. If I actually go back into Workspace Studio here and you look at activity, you can see what's currently executing. So my untitled agent right now is executing. All right, it says complete now. And now if I go to my drafts, you see I've got some drafts in here. It's got Harry Potter trivia. <laughs> it's got that, that it pulled in from that first uh, app sheet app. It's got Cedar Valley Academy that it pulled in from that second app sheet app. And it's got demo that it pulled in from this row of the sheet that we just entered. So you can probably start to see how this can work. And again, we're just looking at a few different data sources here. But if you start to think of your CRM and, your, and QuickBooks and like all the things that you could potentially pull from, you can build a pretty powerful app very easily using this tool. So until Google gives us a native app sheet connector inside Workspace Studio, which I do expect will happen at some point, this type of custom integration or just relying on the sheets integration is the best that we're going to be able to do. To explore this further, I'm looking for companies that want to use Workspace Studio to connect to both app sheet and external services. If that sparks an idea for you or your team, please reach out and let me know what you have in mind you can contact me using the link that I've got down in the description. That's all I've got for today. As always, thanks for watching and happy building.